to the Agape Church of Christ. We are so excited to have you here with us. And hey, if you have a Facebook Live account or a Facebook account, we ask you to please share. Uh, share this video um, as we get started. And we want to make sure that we're able to reach out to all the brothers and sisters in our network and um, all the people that we can. It's just a couple of seconds that will just take us to share it. And you just never know how much this video just might save somebody's soul. So if you can, please share this video. Again, we welcome you to the Agape Church Christ. My name is Brother Eugene Johnson, Jr. And we are excited as we begin to kick off this week with our gospel meeting. Um, with Brother Graylin Freeman from the Quince, the Quince Street Church of Christ. Man, I'm, I'm, Quince Road. Right. Quince Road, Quince Street. We good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. He did a phenomenal job this morning. And we're looking forward to him doing it again this evening. So buckle your seatbelts as we have ourselves a good time. We're going to get started with our brother who will lead us in song. And after that song, then we'll have prayer. So thank you and welcome again to our gospel meeting. God bless you. Our first song for this evening is uh, A Mansion Robe and Crown. I'm going to train you back to more better one right in here. Christ left to prepare a mansion for our children in the air. And I'll join him in the land where till no sorrows can be found. When I receive a mansion, I want to roll, roll, and crown or build me a man. Mansion, yes, a roll, man. The crowning glory there, yeah. I know that peace and love will always surround forever, yeah. Let me, yes, in your throne surround. Lord, please reserve a mansion. I want to roll, roll, and crown. The weather there is always fair. There's sunshine day and night. No cold, no rain will fall there, for the sun shines ever bright. Oh, and I'll need no heavy garment, I'll just wrap my robe around. When I see my mansion, I want to roll, roll, and crown, feel me a man. Mansion, yes, a robe, the crown and glory there, yeah. I know that peace and love will always abound forever. Yeah. Let me, yes, in your throne surround. Lord, please reserve a mansion. Yes, please reserve a mansion. Yes, please reserve a mansion. I want to robe, robe, and crown. Amen. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you now, giving thanks for every blessing that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for allowing us to wake up to see a day we shall never see again and for allowing us to reunite as a congregation to learn your word this evening, Father God. Uh, we ask that you um, help us prepare our mind and our body as we get ready to dive into your word and Pray, stay with those who are unable to make it to church this evening. All this we ask in your son's name. Amen. Our next election will be uh, Yield Not to Temptation. Yield Not to Temptation. Yield not to temptation and fall, yielding in sin. And each victory will help you when you some others to win. You are to fight and fully on word and dark passion subdued. If you would just look ever to Jesus and my Jesus. 
carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to help? And I know he'll call the strength that he'll keep. You and my Jesus, he's willing to aid you. And my Jesus carry you through. So why don't you ask the Savior to heal? And I know you'll come the strength and he'll keep. You and my Jesus is willing to aid you. And my Jesus will carry you through. Lord, hold my hand while I run this Christian race. Oh, Lord, Lord, hold my hand while I run this Christian race. Oh, Lord, Lord, hold my hand while I run this Christian race. Because I don't want to run this race in vain. Race in vain, please, Lord, Lord, hold my hand while I run this Christian race. Oh, Lord, Lord, hold my hand while I run this Christian race. Oh, Lord, Lord, hold my hand while I run this Christian race because I don't want to run this race in vain, race in vain. Please, Lord, Lord, stand by me while I run this Christian race. Oh, Lord, Lord, stand by me while I run this Christian race. Oh, Lord, Lord, stand by me while I run this Christian race because I don't want to run this race and I don't want to run this race and I don't want to run this race in vain, race in vain. Jesus, keep me near the cross. There's a precious fountain free to all a healing strength if flows. From Calvary's mountain, near the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever, till my wrath. Your soul shall find, it shall find rest beyond the river. Amen. Amen. Uh, in the first book of Corinthians, the 15th chapter, uh, Paul describes uh, the gospel. He says that the gospel is the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And over here, earlier in uh, the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, uh, Paul pens the words that <clears throat> demonstrates the act of the gospel as Christ died on the cross and we were instructed. He said in verse 23, starting in chapter 11, that for I received that of the Lord, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. 
And after the same manner also, he took the cup. And when he had supped, saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do ye off as you drink in remembrance of me. For as often as ye drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us give thanks for these emblems. Merciful and all-wise God, we thank you, O Lord, just for uh, personifying the Holy Writ in terms of your death, your burial, and your resurrection on the cross. Father, that uh, redeemed us back to you. And Father, as we uh, partake of these emblems, we thank you for the bread, which represents your body that was broken for us. And we thank you, Lord, for uh, this cup, which represents your shed blood, that blood that covers our sin, that's redeems us and reconciles us back to the Father. And Father, we just ask that those that are with us who have not had the opportunity to partake will adhere to those precepts in terms of having examined ourselves and Father, taking, taking the, the, the bread and the cup in a worthy manner. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name, that we pray. At this time, if you've not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, uh, this time is reserved for you to do so. If all have had the opportunity to partake, you can indicate by saying amen. <clears throat> amen. 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 And it's, Paul also describes the collection. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, concerning the collection for the saints of I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week, but every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him that there be no gatherings when I come. And at this time, we lay by in store such that uh, we may give back uh, that which God has given to us. We recognize that all that we have and all that we are is because of him and everything that we have uh, should be in uh, favor of demonstrating our gratitude for what he has done. He doesn't need anything from us, but he asks us to give back to the furtherance of the kingdom, to expand uh, the, the borders of his kingdom. And we, uh, at this time then, uh, we like to uh, make known that for those of us who are visiting, you're not asked to contribute, but if you'd like to do so, uh, there is the opportunity. There is a link, a uh, QR code that uh, would allow you to give to agapeclc.org. Uh, you may give there if you wish, uh, but it's more. And also, if you uh, have another op option by which to give, uh, or, or prefer to give, let, let that be known and we will uh, take up that offering as well. So at this time, let us pray. Uh, for the offering. Merciful and almighty God, once again, we thank you, Lord, just for everything that you've given to us, the means by which to provide for ourselves on this time side of eternity. Father, we pray that um, as the offering that has been given uh, throughout this day in your church in this world and land throughout, that these monies will be used to uh, serve your kingdom, to uh, expand the borders of your kingdom, Father, and to serve and to uh, be a light in, in the world of darkness of uh, where those who may not have that we may be able to assist in their times of need, Father, not to just store monies in the church coffers, but to, uh, to literally use uh, these funds in a way that, that demonstrates our love to our fellow human beings. And Father, we just thank you again for all that you have done and for all that you have allowed us to do as, as stewards of that which you've entrusted to us. And it's in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our next election is a ray of hope. A ray of hope. A ray of hope will shine beams from God's mercy kind and when darkness covers your world a ray of hope unfurls 
Sometimes I feel so sad with all the trials I have had. Sing endless weeks, the pain bringing dark clouds, scattering rain. But when the sun won't shine, I'll try to keep in mind and this thought to live me to go. Oh, God is my ray of hope and a ray of hope will shine. Things from God's mercy. See, God, and when darkness covers your world, a ray of hope Brother Jones, you have the scripture. Good evening. The scripture reading for this evening is from the book of Mark, the 13th chapter, verse 1 through 4. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Seest thou that these great buildings, there shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign when all these things shall be fulfilled? I have read the book of Mark, the 13th chapter, verse one through four. Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come in prayer, thankful that you allowed us to return on this platform this evening. We thank you for the members that are on here. And we ask that you continue to be with those that are not able to join us on this evening. We pray that the works that's being done on today is pleasing in your sight. May you be with Brother Freeman as he comes forth with the message of this evening. In your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our next song before the speaker is uh, Where the Soul Never Dies, Where the Soul Never Dies. To Canaan's land I am on my way where the soul of man never dies and my darkest night will turn to day where the soul of man never dies and dear friends there'll be no sad farewell there'll be no tears and eyes oh and where all is peace his joy and love, where the soul of man never dies. A rose is blooming there for me, where the soul of man never dies. And I will spend eternity, where the soul of man never dies. Indeed. Friends, there'll be no sad farewell. There'll be no tears in eyes. Oh, and where all is peace, his joy and love, where the soul of man never dies. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, the saints from the Quince congregation are delighted to be invited to this wondrous occasion 
wondrous occasion of our fellowship to be with the saints of the Agape congregation. We had a delightful time this morning in our endeavor to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And we do indeed, indeed bring you greetings from all of the saints at the Quince congregation, and those who had a desire to be here but could not. And the saints of God there at Agape, uh, we have prayed and planned and planned and prayed. And God has brought us to this day, to this occasion, and this opportunity for us to honor the Father of lights, to worship him in spirit and in truth, to give ourselves over to the things contained in God's precious, glorious book, Divine. We're here tonight to do exactly that, to give God that which is due him. We, members of the body of Christ, we believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe in the accuracy of the Bible. We believe that the Bible is the authentic word communicated from God and everything that we need to know in order to serve God, in order to honor God, in order to demonstrate that we know who the Father is by the life that we live is contained in this book, the book of books, the book that is going to be open and all of our lives are going to be judged, contained uh, by the things contained therein. And so we honor the word of God Almighty and we rejoice in the very fact that we've been afforded this occasion and this time on the time side of life. That we can come indeed to honor the Father of lights. This great and glorious thing that the saints and the leadership at the Agape Congregation have adapted during the course and the balance of this week for this series of meetings, this series of lessons, a house not made with hands. And we're going to go back to the word of God and extract from it those things that we can glean and make application of to our lives. Our brother read for us from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 4. We'll go back reread and understand what the word of God is driving at here in this thought. We combine that with 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1, where our main text of scripture is being derived from. Mark 13, verse number 1, the Bible says, and as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said unto him, Master, See if what manner of stones and what buildings are here. Jesus answered and said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. That shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him, I did you tell us. When shall these things be? What shall be the sign? All these things shall be fulfilled. We looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 1. Now we know that if the earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Tonight, if you give me just a few moments, we'll speak on the subject matter of the temple not made with hands. The temple not made with hands. In that passage, there in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus and his disciples, they are visiting the temple there in Jerusalem. Now, remember, historians tell us, history tells us that this was the relatively new temple. It had been constructed some 30 odd years and completed some 30 odd years uh, prior during the reign of Herod the Great. Herod considered himself a master builder. Herod considered himself a great builder. He thought that he could appease his Jewish constituents there in Jerusalem. He thought that he could provide for himself an everlasting legacy. He thought that he would attribute fame and honor and glory to himself by uh, reconstructing and rebuilding uh, Solomon's former temple. He, he spared no expense. The temple was constructed out of limestone. Historians tell us that huge blocks of stone were quarried. The, the smallest of these stones weighed two to three tons. Two to three tons. The largest stone was 36 feet long and weighed several tons. No, no mortar was utilized. The weight of the stones held the stones in place. And you may wonder, well, how in the world could such massive stones 
be moved? How could they be hauled? And how could they be lifted? And how could they be set in place where the, the rocks were hewn in quarry and moved on rollers by teams of oxen to that site? And as the walls grew higher, and as they were constructed, a great earthen burn was, was heaped up along to the walls. And, and the oxen were driven, and they were driven along an elevated incline. And, and as the oxen would pull the weight of the stones higher and higher, they would be elevated into place. And finally, as the walls were constructed, the, the earthen beam or burn was removed. And, and so now the disciples and Jesus, the disciples are, are sitting outside of the temple. And, and the disciples are marveling at the size of the stones. They're marveling at the magnitude and the grandeur of the temple. They, they're looking at it and they're so impressed and they're so moved by what they're seeing. They look at Jesus and they say, look, master, do you see how impressive this is? Do you see how glorious this is? I imagine those men looking at the temple that day, looking at those massive stones was reassuring to them, looking at how impressive it was. It was a magnificent sight. It gave them a sense of stability. It gave them a sense of security. We all remember and we all understand and gravitate to this idea that the power of an institution is carried by its symbols. The power of an institution is carried by its symbols. I think I said something there. The power of an institution is carried by its symbols. That's why Al Qaeda struck us or struck us the way that they did. That's why they struck the World Trade Center because it was a symbol of our economic power. That's why they struck the Pentagon. It was a symbol of the United States military powers. That's why they were trying to attack either the White House or the Capitol. It was the center and the symbol of our political structure, our political power. We have monuments, we have statues, the Statue of Liberty standing out there in the Bay in New York City, seemingly beckoning the poor and, and the those that are downtrodden. Now we know that many of our symbols don't carry the weight that they should carry. Uh, the symbolism that's there has long ago been lost, but the power of an institution is carried by its symbolism. The front doors to that temple, they tell us that they were made of solid gold. Think about it now, solid gold, the temple faced toward the east. And in the morning, when the sun would rise, in the morning, when the sun would rise, legend has it, that when the sun beamed down upon those golden doors, that the reflection was literally blinding. Can you see the disciples marveling at what they see? The golden doors, the weight of the stones, the massiveness of the building and all of its structures, what could be more reassuring? What could be more satisfying? What could be more stabilizing? The disciples feel compelled. They're overwhelmed. They point out to Jesus, look at it, Master. Look at this. Look at how wondrous it is. Look how glorious it is. Look how magnificent it is. And Jesus surprises him. This is what we always can love about Jesus, the son of the living God, how Christ can always turn the tables on you, how Christ can always make you think and think again. Jesus shocked them by his response. Jesus stymied them by his response. Jesus said, do you see all these buildings? Do you see this massive structure? Do you see how wondrous it is? Do you see how glorious it is? I'm telling you, not one stone will be left standing on another. They're all going to be destroyed. Now, I want you to put your feet in the sandals of those men. I want you to put yourself in the robes of those men. I want you to be standing there and feeling what they must have felt. When Jesus said, look at all of this, take a good long look because the day is coming. Not one stone is going to be standing on another. The temple mount, the temple itself was so impressive. It seemed impregnable. It seemed unmovable. It seemed everlasting. And yet 
in just a few short years after Mark penned his gospel, the Roman army would descend upon Jerusalem and utterly destroy that temple. Nothing would remain except a pile of rubble. The Jewish temple from that day forward would never, ever, ever be rebuilt. The disciples, they are awestruck. The disciples, uh, th their minds are literally blown. They, it is too much for them to absorb. I can imagine Peter, James, and John, and Andrew looking at one another in total shock. They can't get their heads wrapped around what Jesus has revealed to them. Church, we got to see that the temple was the center of Jewish religion. It was the center of Jewish faith. It was the center. It was where God was sitting. It was where God revealed himself. It was where the glory seat was, the mercy seat was. To see it destroyed, to consider it to be destroyed was unimaginable. Let's go back. Let's go back. The scene, it took place during the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry. Just a few days prior to that, he had ridden triumphant into Jerusalem, riding on the back of the donkey. You remember reading it, don't you? The people were cheering, Hosanna, great is he that comes in the name of the Lord. They were so uh, enraptured with what Jesus was doing. Here comes the Messiah. Jesus is riding into Jerusalem and they're hailing him as the son of David. But in just a few more days, just a few more days, Jesus would be apprehended. Jesus would be arrested. Jesus would be betrayed. Jesus would be on trial. And then same folk who cried, Hosanna, blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Just a few days later, were saying, away with him. Let him be crucified. Put him to death. Now, just before this exchange with the disciples, Jesus had been observing the temple's procedures. He had been standing there watching the treasury activity. He watched as a poor widow woman put in her monies, two little copper coins, all that she had. Jesus remarked on the total sacrifice that this woman had given. She had given all that she had. That's what your Bible says. Meanwhile, the well-off people were, were putting in a considerable amount more but it was just a tiny bit of their overall worth. And while in the temple area, Jesus had also denounced the hypocrisy of the religious scribes. He said they love, they love to parade around in their fancy robes. They love to get the titles rabbi. They love to stand out there and be given honor and praise by all of the people. Jesus said they devour widows' houses, make long-winded prayers. They do it for to be seen of men. Jesus says, how, how shall you escape the damnation of hell? Jesus was taking a tour of the temple. And when he took that tour, it left him with a bitter aftertaste in his mouth. He loathed the uncaring and hypocritical attitude of that religious hierarchy, grown arrogant and greedy. They lost their way, church. They corrupted the purity of their devotion to God. They sold their neighbor for profit. Where are you going with this, Freeman? I'm going to get somewhere in just a minute. Just hold on. We're off to a, uh, we may be off to a rough start here. You know, they tell us that the most dangerous time to the flight is take off and landing. I'm still taking off now. So buckle up. They failed to follow the greatest commandments of God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. They lost that. They lost all of that. And that outrage, that frustration prompted Jesus to gather up a scourge. It prompted Jesus to whip these men out of the temple, prompted him to overturn their tables, prompted him to drive them out. He overdid it. They were ripping the people off, and all they wanted to do was worship the Lord their God. He cleansed the temple of that corruption. Now, as the church, as the church of Christ, we should read this text and tremble. We would do well to remember that the church exists 
for Christ's sake. The church is Christ at the center. The, his mission is our mission. His will is our will. We exist to proclaim his message and to serve him in love and in grace. We demonstrate that we know who Jesus is by our concern and our compassion for our fellow man. When somebody is hurting, we ought to be hurting. When somebody is in need, we ought to be able to fulfill that need. Buckle up right here. The military, then it defines what they call um, mission creep. The military identifies what it calls mission creep. Now that means that they engage in military situation with one set of objectives in mind. Underline that in your mind. They engage in military objectives, military situations with one set of objectives in mind. But along the way, along the way, things get added to that plan. Things get added to that objective. One small thing gets tacked on and then another, and then another, and then another. And over time, the purpose of the engagement has shifted from the mark. And friends, the same thing can happen with Christ's church. Our mission, our purpose, it's simple. We are Christ's church. We exist for Christ's sake. We are here to proclaim the love of Christ and to serve in his name. When a need arises, it should be the church that's taking the lead. When someone is hurting, it should be the church that's standing up. When somebody is crying, it should be the church that's standing there drying those tears. When someone is naked, it should be the church that's giving them clothes. When somebody is hungry, it should be the church that's feeding them. Along the way, all sorts of urgencies and causes get in there and redirect our cause, lest we forget lest we try to create the church into a house built with our hands and in our image, we need to remember that Christ's purpose is our purpose. Jesus was always concerned about people. He was always concerned about people more than things. The disciples were saying, look at how glorious this temple is. Look at how wondrous it is. Jesus said, sons, don't y'all understand? The time is coming. Not one stone is going to be standing on another. Tear this temple down. And I'm going to raise it up again. A temple not made with hands. Do you see where I'm going now? Do you see it? Church, we ought to cry out with the psalmist. We ought to cry out with the psalmist in Psalm 61. And I believe it's about verse number two. He said there from the end of the earth, when I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Lead me, lest I, like King Saul, allow human sentiment to supersede a divine mandate and practical advice to derail a sacred trust. Lead me, lest I, like Nadab and Abihu, falsely assume that silence gives consent and the absence of an explicit negative are sufficient grounds for innovative experimentation with the will of God. Lead me, lest I, like the sons of Zebedee, seek unearned positions, ignoring an historical and a biblical principle truth and that true success does not precede solitude. True success does not precede sacrifice. True success does not precede service. Lead me, lest I, like the prodigal son, be lured by the lust of the far country pleasures, only to dismally discover that the devil engages in false advertisements and his commercials are nothing more than candy coated lies lead me to the rock that is higher than I, lest I, like Ananias and Sapphira, refuse to learn the valuable lesson that money is a good servant, but it's a poor master, and that I should never sign a contract where my life and my soul is on the mortgage. Yes, lead me to the rock that's higher than I, lest I, like Judas Iscariot, allow Satan to make me believe that human life is cheap 
and can be bought and sold like animals in the marketplace and turn my back on the most important thing that ever came down from the hills up on high. May we not be so tethered to the world and our own security that we lose courage for our prophetic profession. May we not be so absorbed in our own importance and our own influence that we lose our compassion and forget the needs of sons and daughters of men. May we not be so smitten by the magnificence of our own physical structures, our own edifices, our own buildings, our own earthly accoutrements and our beautiful services that we forget it's the poor in spirit who ought to be blessed. It's those who are hanging their heads down. It's those who are driven to their knees. It's those who are in need that we must tend to. That is that way with soul that requires our compassion. Lest we ever forget lives of all great men remind you if we can make our lives sublime and imparting leave behind you footprints on the sands of time. Footprints that perhaps another sailing over life's solemn main, so that lost and shipwrecked brother seen shall take heart again. So let us all be up and doing with a heart prepared for every faith, still achieving, still pursuing, learn to labor and wait on the Lord. I'm circling the airport now. I'm coming in for my landing. We live in an era. We live in an era when increasingly more and more people have no connection with the church, let alone the church of Christ. Have no connection with the church, let alone the church of Christ. We live in an era where people are unchurched. They don't know nothing about church. They don't understand now, after the pandemic, we've got a society of folk now who have a built-in, ready-made excuse not to even come to the church. Uh, the Gallup poll takes a survey of individuals with church affiliation. One possible response to the question, are you affiliated with any particular denomination or any particular church? One answer for the response is none. If people have no connection with any religious community, they can answer none. In 2000, in the year 2000, 8% of Gallup poll respondents answered none. Last year, 2021, that response jumped up to 35%. Let, let that wrap around your mind. Let, let that wrap around your mind. There are people that you know, some of them, they've left the church. And, and they don't paint a favorable picture about what they've seen. Their reasons for their disaffiliation include having a negative experience in the church. They met with judgmental atmosphere. They responded to church communities who are centered more upon what they're against than what they're for. They were put off by divisions and internal cliques within the church. As the Church of Christ, the image of one stone in the temple, not standing on top of another, ought to be in our mind and call us upon daily repentance. How can we make the church into something human made, something we fashion in our own image? How might we need to disassemble this thing stone by stone and to be more like Christ's tabernacle? We got to be a house not made with hands, not made with hands, but rather with the spirit of the living God. How do we do it? We let the truth of the spirit manifest itself in our mind and in our life, in our daily walk, so that when people see us, they see the light of Christ. They see the fruit of the spirit manifest in our lives in just a couple of days from that exchange in our text in Mark 14. In just a couple of days with his disciples, Jesus, he'd be ready to lay down everything aside. He'd lay everything aside. He'd be arrested. He'd be tried. He'd be beaten. He'd be condemned. In his death and in his burial, Jesus will be toppled. Toppled, much like the fallen stones he predicted to his disciples. And in his death, brothers and sisters, he fulfilled the promise that he made when he cleansed the temple. 
You remember what he said, don't you? He overturned the tables of the money changers, drove them out with the livestock. They challenged him. When Jesus was beating them folk out the temple, they looked around at Jesus in John chapter 2 and verse number 8, 17 or so, and they cried out, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave you the authority to do what you're doing? And what sign do you show us that will convince us that you have the authority to do what you're doing? with this temple and to these people. Jesus said in John 2 and verse number 19, destroy this temple, destroy this temple. And in three days, I'll rise it up again. Now, that whole thing came back up to Jesus. That whole thing came back up to him in Mark chapter 14, verses 56 through 58. Many, the Bible says, many, the Bible says, many, the Bible says, brought false witness against Jesus but their witness could not agree one to the other. And there rose up in Mark 14 and verse 56, there rose up certain that bear false witness against him. What did they say? They said, well, we heard him say, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I appeared another made without hands. But neither did their testimony or witness come together. Brothers and sisters, visiting friends, Jesus was willing to lay it all down, lay down his security, lay down his reputation, lay down his very life. Christ made his own body, the altar and the temple and the sacrifice. And in that gift, he offered for all time the single sacrifice for sin. Christ's own body became the temple. It became the holy sacrifice. And in three days, he raised up. In three days, he raised up the temple made without human hands, but with the power of the resurrection life. And that same power that raised up Jesus is here tonight to raise us up so that we can walk in newness of life. Friends, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. May we be that church that's built upon that sort of rock foundation. Friends, tonight, there's some things in this life that uh, you can be ignorant of. You can be ignorant of, and it really won't matter much in the great consummation of all things. You may know nothing about astrology. You may know nothing about biology. You may know nothing about cardiology. You may know nothing about hematology. You may know nothing about meteorology. But if you don't know something about theology, it's going to prove disastrous in the final end of all things. you got to know something about the theology. Theology is simply the knowledge of God, understanding God, being aware of God, being mindful of God, knowing about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ so that you can surrender your will to God's will. God will wash your sins away, adding you to the New Testament church the church that you can read about in your Bible. Friends, the time is coming, and it now is, when we've got to surrender ourselves to the testimony of all men. God. The devil is constantly busy, striving to undermine our faith, striving to pull us away from the things of God, striving to fix us so that we will doubt God's love, doubt God's care, doubt God's concern, doubt God's compassion. Don't let that happen. We are the temple not made with things. The poet put it in words like this, a sinner staggered home from a barroom floor, having drunk so much he could drink no more. He went to bed with a troubled brain and dreamed that he rode on a hellbound train. The air was tight, it stank and was damp and dimly lit with a brimstone lamp. An imp for fuel was shoveling bones and the furnace moaned with a thousand groans. The boiler was filled with deadly beer, and Satan himself was the engineer. The passengers made such a motley crew. Churchmen was atheist, Gentile and Jew. There were rich men in bark cloth and beggars in rags, beautiful women and withered old hags. There were red men, brown men, black men, and white, chained all together with a horrible sight. Faster and faster the engine flew, wilder and wilder the country grew. Brighter and brighter the lightning flashed, louder and louder the thunder crashed. 
hotter and hotter. The air became to the clothes were burned from every frame. And in the distance, a hideous yell, a high kind of devil with nearing hell. And oh, how the passengers shrieked with pain. They begged the devil, please stop the train. He capered about, they danced with glee. He laughed and joked. At the rag of me, my faithful friends, you've done my work, and the devil can never a payday shirt. You amuse yourself, the picture show where the theater gathers. Did you go? You played and mixed with the devil's Bible. You've gone and worshiped the sinful idol. You hoarded a bone to the cankers and rust. You've given free debt to your hellish lust. You've murdered and thieved and robbed and lied and mocked at God in your hell bound pride. You paid full fare, so I'll carry you through. For it's only right that you get your due. And every labor is worthy of hire. So I land you safe in my lake of fire. Where my faithful subjects you'll always be. And dwell in hell eternally. Mr. Sinner awoke with an awful cry. Clothes soaking wet, his hair standing high. He prayed to God and prayed as well to be saved from sin and the devil's hell. His faith and obedience were not in vain. For he never more rode on that hell bound train. And tonight, tonight, you can cancel your reservation with hell. Tonight, you can cancel that situation. Tonight, you can turn your back on sin and Satan. Tonight, you can become that temple, not made with hands. You can become a part of that blood bought institution, that heaven bound Jesus led church. Hear the word of God. Believe the saints. Repent of your sins. Confess faith in his name. Put him on in baptism. The brethren there, down there, the brethren down there in Agape, the brethren down there in Fresno, Texas, they'll meet you at the meeting house. They'll baptize you into Christ and put you into the body of Christ as Jesus washes your sins away and add to, to the family of God. If there's the need for prayer, if there's the need to reconnect yourself with God's family, do it now. Do it now. My blood cruises warm through your veins. While the hell doors of heaven and the church are cracked now in the jar, waiting for you, waiting for you to come and surrender your will. Do it now, right now, while we sing the song of encouragement and invitation. Ask me now. Oh, gentle Savior, oh, please hear my humble cry. Oh, and while on others thou art called, call, call, calling, oh, and you not pass me by. I'm calling you to say, oh, my Savior, Lord, please hear my humble cry. Oh, and while on others thou art calling, Lord, do not pass me by. Amen, amen. Amen. Just let that marinate in your spirit just a little bit. <laughs> we can't run too fast from that because that was, that's a whole lot of meat right there, Brother Freeman. Thank you so much for that amazing lesson. And thank goodness, thank goodness we have it recorded on Facebook because I show sure enough got to go back and get some more of that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So again, we appreciate you. We thank you so much. We, we extend this time for, for all our brothers and sisters. If you have a prayer request, this will be the time to let us know. And uh, you can put it in the comments or you can uh, verbalize it at this time as we give time for those on Facebook Live because there's just a little slight delay that if we have some prayer requests, we, we don't want to miss them. So if you do have a prayer request, please let us know at this time. Okay. If there are no prayer requests at this time and if you happen to send it in, uh, we will make sure we make mention of it at the end of this service. 
Brother Vern Burrow. Eugene, uh, we have a, a dear brother that's probably uh, probably not going to make it. He's an elderly person. He's in the hospital now, and uh, he's probably passing on or, or will soon. He's been a faithful uh, Christian for many, many years, and it's just kind of kind of gut wrenching knowing that uh, his time is, is near, and uh, he's he's been in the hospital for two weeks. He's had COVID and he had a major stroke today. And uh, just, uh, his name is uh, Earl Lawler and his son, Mark, you, you've met him, Eugene. Uh, Mark Lawler uh, has been his caregiver for many, many years. And uh, it's just kind of a, a sad situation for us, you know, to know uh, on the one hand that we're not gonna see him much longer, probably, uh, at least that's the way we see it right now. And uh, but knowing that uh, he's he's going to be safe in the arms of, of Jesus is uh, reassuring. And so uh, pray for uh, the Lawler family, if you would, as they uh, possibly go through a, a time of bereavement here and, and uh, for a, a great brother in Christ. Thank you. Thank great you, lesson, Brother Freeman. Great lesson. Brother, we're praying for your friend. I surely will. And our brother in Christ. Thank you, Brother Vern. Are there any other prayer requests? Let's go to God in prayer, family. Would you bow with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity again to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, an awesome God you are. We're so humbled to be in your presence. It's you who have given us everything that we need rather than the things that we want. And for that, we're ever so grateful. Father, it's you that who have forgiven us of our sins when we have let you down. And for that, we're ever thankful. Father, we thank you so much for this evening and you allowed Brother Freeman to come and to share a word with us this evening. We thank you for our other brothers and sisters who joined on this platform that we're able to fellowship with, to worship with, Father. Uh, in spirit and in truth. And we're just so grateful for this opportunity um, that you allowed our paths to be in sync, Father, in sync with you. And we just pray that everything that was done and that was said this evening made you proud. We thank you so much for the word that was shared for Brother Freeman. I ask that you continue to bless him as he shares your word um, at wherever he goes, Father. We ask that you continue to to bless him, bless him with good health, as well as his wife and family, that all will work out in your favor as they continue to take care of things in their area on the battlefield in Tennessee, Father. So we, we're just thankful so much for um, our brother in Christ and all that he does and our fellow brothers and sisters who worship there um, at the Church of Christ on Quince Road. Father, we ask that you would uh, be with the request that was made from Brother Brother Burrow, we ask that you be with the Lawler family during this time of transition. Um, we ask that you be with uh, Mark, who has been taking care of Mr. Earl. And Father, we pray that you continue to give them strength in all areas for what's to come. Uh, we pray for the doctors and the nurses who are taking care of Mr. Earl um, during this potential transition time. And we just pray, Father, that everything will work out in your favor, Father. And we just pray that uh, if that time happens anytime soon, you give them the strength during that time of grieving and bereavement and that we do everything that we can in prayer and in our presence to be able to help our fellow brothers and sisters who are connected to that family. Father, we also ask that you would be with others who are sick during this time, those who have lost loved ones and those who are currently on the road traveling and that you would help them in the area where it's needed that you will guide them to that destination safely, give them the strength they need uh, to recover from any sickness that have taken place and the strength during their time of bereavement. Father, we ask that as we continue on um, during this week of learning more about you, we ask that you be with all our speakers uh, who will be presenting your word and that you continue to crown their head with knowledge and wisdom that they're able to share it in a way we all can understand. And they do it in a way to give you all glory, honor, and praise. We pray, Father, these next few days, if it's in your will, it will be the most exciting days of our lives up until this point, Father, in that we draw closer to you more than ever before. 
And we pray for our world and the things that are going on in this world. We pray that we do our part and be part of the solution and not the problem. That we're able to reach one individual, share the word of God with them, to invite at least one individual um, to this platform that are able to hear more about your word. Father, help us to be able to take advantage of the opportunity on our own battlefield, Father, knowing that you're right there with us. Now we ask, Father, that you continue to bless us all and help us, Father, to realize that we don't need no validation from any man, knowing that you validated us every day you wake us up, that we are enough, we are adequate, and we are worthy, Father, of being here and to be your children on this battlefield. So, Father, we love you, and we thank you so much for loving us. And we just pray, Father, that we do everything that we can from this point on to make you proud. As we ask these things in your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Again, we want to thank everyone for joining us this evening in this great, great beginning of our gospel meeting. And we're looking forward uh, to the next few days of excitement. Uh, of Brother Vern Burrow, who will be uh, speaking on tomorrow. And so, listen, I know Brother Freeman won't be here tomorrow, but that don't mean y'all don't have to show up. Come on now. We appreciate y'all support, you know, to uh, come on back and join us in supporting this gospel message, um, especially on this platform where we can literally reach people across the globe. So, uh, we appreciate your support on that. This gospel meeting will be uh, broadcast Facebook Live. It'll also be broadcast on the Zoom link as well. And if you need any more information, if you're on Facebook Live, please send us your email address and we'll send you the information to connect on the Zoom platform. You can also like our Agape Church of Christ Facebook page. And I promise you won't miss a Sunday worship service, or a Wednesday night Bible class. But most importantly, during this week for our gospel meeting, you won't miss the meeting. If you like our page, you'll definitely get the notification. So please do that. You don't want to miss it. And we appreciate your support. Please, please share the video. It only take a few seconds to share the link to be able to help someone else get closer to God. So we want to keep those things in mind. And we ask that you continue to support this gospel meeting um, as we continue to give God the glory in all things that we do. Now, our meeting tomorrow will be at 7. So we would love for you guys to join us at 7 uh, tomorrow, as well as on Tuesday and Wednesday, as it conclude with Brother Freeman will take us on home. He started us off. And then he'll take us to the end. I'm not going to say he the alpha and the omega, but it sounds good, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, so please, please uh, let us have a good time and uh, join us in this great day of fellowship with our gospel meeting for our first gospel meeting here at the Gape Church of Christ. Um, are there any other announcements, brothers, that we need to uh, make aware of? Please let me know. I don't want to miss anything. All right. There are none. Thank you, brother. Brother Freeman, any closing words before we depart? Again, brothers, I'm encouraged behind the participation. Looking forward to the remainder of the week. I will certainly be with you all again on tomorrow evening in support of the brethren that are going to be bringing the message. Be there as well as on Tuesday. Lord be willing. We'll wrap it all up on Wednesday evening. And I want to thank again the saints from the Quince congregation for logging in and being with us tonight by way of your support. Thank you, Brother Miles, for participating and leading the singing for us. Brother uh, Matthews for the wonderful working of the slides and the projector there. I, I keep these brothers jumping all the time, We're moving around from scripture to scripture. And, uh, and it's just a delight uh, uh, for us to be here, to be a part of this great fellowship. Looking forward to it. Let's keep the faith. Till the last amen. 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 Well, thank you so much. Amen. We're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and close out, uh, and we'll let our brother lead us in a closing song. And uh, brother Evans, can you take us home in the end, please, or the closing prayer? Thank you.
Draw me near. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and he told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding son. Amen. Amen. O oh, merciful God, once again, as we come before your throne with thanksgiving, Lord, that you've allowed our ears to have heard this wonderful message to enlighten and to encourage us, Lord, to help us to understand that we are temples not made with hands, Father, that we as your church uh, should be in the business of helping people. Father, we ask that your blessings will continue to cover uh, each and every family that's represented here, that your Holy Spirit will sweep over their households and that all of your blessings will redound to our lives and that we will then be the people that you would have us to be. Father, we uh, thank you for uh, the message and the messenger. Father, we look forward to uh, the, the message throughout the remainder of uh, the, the meeting through Wednesday. We pray for every brother that will be delivering that message, Lord, that our hearts will be continuously filled. Lord, we just ask that all that we do as we strive to be your people will be pleasing and acceptable unto thee. And now unto you, O oh God, who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We submit these prayers in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good to see Brother Roderick Curry from the Beach Grove Congregation down there in Brownsville, Tennessee, is on the line with us today. Good to all see right. you, brother, brother Roderick. All right. Good to see all of you, uh, the pictures and uh, those of you who are actually in video. Uh, 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 Sister Brown, uh, uh, you know, uh, I I'll say this in love that you look better than Brother Brown. And so, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and right there, Doc, I'm not going to argue with you this time. I'm just not going to argue with you. But uh, we're going to have words when I see you. Uh, Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Sister Angela, we, we, we love you. Thank you for allowing mm -hmm. us to be a part of, I mean, for you allowing Brother Freeman to be a part of our uh, gospel meeting and, and Brother Vern, we look forward to hearing from you tomorrow. We love you all. Just glad to have you with us. Uh, just excited about it. So uh, wonderful, wonderful things to come. Well, we